sold like a thousand copies of that? Yeah. yeah. Imagine. Yeah, but the pastor couldn't believe it. <laughs> he couldn't sell crap. That was amazing. And that couple moved to Virginia Beach and he became an admiral. And then he got conservative. He was a close friend of Dorgan's. Really? And now he hardly talks to Dorgan. <laughs> oh, I tell you. You got to pay the price, though, if you want to preach the truth, I tell you. <laughs> people don't want to hear it. And I can tell loads of times, people would just say, would you just be quiet? Or I can smell they want to say, well, go away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, you know, if you want to get patted on the back by the people, then you can't get up there and preach the gospel because the gospel is so cutting. You know, ideally the people would read the God, the three readings before they came to Mass and they hear them again proclaimed orally. And then the, the, the priest or minister, deacon, we shouldn't use the word priest, but anyway, we're stuck with it. The presbyter should explain and add and balance and throw stuff about their daily lives so they could balance it and come to a judgment. Because the church is not supposed to moralize or tell you what to do. You're supposed to have a delicate conscience formed by reading of scripture and pertinent theological <coughs> materials. And then uh, for the lay or ordained, there's no difference. Then you're supposed to apply it to your daily life. And I always think of, you know, if you read the gospel, the gospels every day or the epistles, <clears throat> after a while you just say, stop, you know, because Jesus is so demanding, you know, never tell a lie, never cheat, be concerned for the poor every day of your lives. And there's one I always laugh at myself in, in one of his <clears throat> teachings there, Jesus said, you know, uh, <clears throat> you must feed the poor. Uh, if you have one co coat, cut it in half. Uh, if you have two tunics, rather, give one to the poor. Uh, turn the other cheek. Nobody wants to hear that, especially in today's vulgar and violent culture, and especially even in the church. Right now, we don't know which is more corrupt, the Catholic Church or the United States government. It's a, it's discouraging, but we have to face up to it. But one of the practical things Jesus says, lend to those from whom you do not expect payment. You know, when you make a loan, you have a right to expect payment, but you're supposed to go beyond that, really turning your other cheek or being generous with your checkbook. So I've done it, I can't tell you how many times to relatives and to a few poor parishioners, but, and you know, and I did expect to pay, be paid back because it's sort of justice. But when people are so poor, everything becomes common. So usually I get a check or two, uh, and after that, the third or fourth check starts to bounce. And like any human being, I get teed off, but then the secret, if I'm gonna follow Jesus is, I take that as one of his teachings. You got to rend even to your relatives <clears throat> uh, from whom you know by experience. Never mind, you don't expect payment. You don't. You uh, you wouldn't think the second time when you got the third bounce check. You know. You know, it's like the practical part of the gospel. I, if we were in a confessional booth and, and you were making a life confession, which you shouldn't, but this is just a hypothetical case. And I could ask you, uh, would I, the two burning questions I would ask you, <clears throat> in your sexual life, are you really giving yourself away to the other person, which creates, of course, the real sacrament of marriage, and document what you do with your checkbook at the beginning of the month and the 15th of the month, if you're one of those persons that get paid twice a month, which is, includes a lot of people. But in church, they don't like you to talk about money. I'm talking about money for the poor, not upping the collection. Although you have to do that for Catholics because they're the cheapest people in the world. And that's documentable, you know. 
even in a Pentecostal church, which they don't really know much about the Bible or Jesus. They think they do, and you have to respect it. But they would think nothing of giving, they give 10% every Sunday. And the Mormons, and the Seventh-day Adventists, and the Witnesses of Jehovah, and the Southern Baptist Convention. And the Mormons, you got to give your tax receipts to the pastor, a copy, so he could see if you tie 10%. If we did that in an average Catholic parish, the collection would go up five times as much every Sunday, minimally. So I don't know what it is. People don't want, they, they want to read the gospel. They're hungry for the gospel. They know it's the source of their life. But when it comes down to practical stuff, they'd rather be pietistic about it. Talk about how the Blessed Mother was a nice lady. But we don't know a damn thing about the Blessed Mother. You know, just 